Greetings and welcome to another Diablo 4 build video. Today I want to show you the Barrage build with Inner Sight in a cold variant uh, because there's also other variants I want to explore in the future. There will be a Poison variant for example and possibly a Shadow variant but for now we are focusing on the cold variant which is the I guess most dominant or popular version in terms of how you build your Rogue, no matter if it's Barrage, Rapid Fire or something else because of the Frigid Fate passive but more about that in a second so first of all we are using Inner Sight why are we using Inner Sight? because Inner Sight is freaking cool Inner Sight is so nice just to have unlimited resource and just go and blast for well in this case 7.22 seconds and we can uh, make this number higher but more to that when we go to the gear then we also get a critical strike chance for that time <clears throat> and some other benefits that comes from like the Paragon board. Um, I know combo points is generally stronger and you reach higher damage ceiling. So if you're looking for the highest damage build that's possible with a rogue, then this might not be for you. But if you're looking for something that is fun, that is a bit different and still very, very viable for farming, for doing tier 100 nightmare dungeons, then stay and enjoy all right so with that out of the way let's get into the skill tree first we got invigorating strike and enhanced invigorating strike which we barely use it is on our skill bar because i don't really have anything else to put there because i don't have any points to put sometimes i'm actually using it uh, more than that in a second uh, i said it's a lot i think anyways uh, we got barrage with the advanced brush to get more critical strike chance we have Sturdy and Siphoning Strikes. Yes, this is close damage. We are pretty close because we are kind of shotgunning most of our enemies, especially bosses, which means we are right up, up to the face of the boss because Barrage will then uh, hit with multiple arrows. Uh, Shadow Step for mobility and also damage reduction right here. We have Cal Drops with uh, the Chill effect here. Again, we are a cold variant, so we benefit from Chill and Frozen. Uh, weapon Mastery for more damage, dash, and the Methodical Dash for more mobility. Unstable Elixir is kind of insane and I always or most often forget to use my healing potion, so pardon me. I still need to get into that rhythm a little bit, but if you use it, you get 30 multiply, 40% multiply for 10 seconds, which is insane. And we get some points here from our uh, cold, from our headpiece, uh, and then Trick Attacks is also great. The days are stunned, we get more crit chance and also critical strike chance as uh, damage. Sorry, then moving over here, we have agile for a little bit of defensive stats, <clears throat> uh, dark shroud with enhanced and countering dark shroud. You can also use subverting. I have to check which is better, and it depends on your crit strike chance. And of course, you have exploited in malice, as any good rogue would do, and then cold imbument. And here's the, oh, sorry, it's Frigid Fate. Uh, sorry, it's, I said it again. It's Frigid Finesse, not Frigid Fate. I think Frigid Fate is the legendary Paragon node for the Sorcerer. So Frigid Finesse increases our damage significantly against chilled enemies and even more so against frozen. So this is why cold is so strong because we're chilling enemies, we're often freezing them together with cold and human as well. And we also have uh, increased damage of crowd control enemies right here and doubled against frozen so column human is up we deal really really good damage then you have innovation we have a bit of energy problem um, sadly i don't have a ring of the silent skies yet as soon as i have that this um probably might not be needed anymore we will see then i know a second win is really really good <clears throat> the problem with inner sight is that it doesn't count as spending energy in that moment of inner sight, in that seconds of inner sight. So we really don't have that barrier up all that much. Um, I have to toy around it a little bit more, I guess. Uh, right now I'm using Agile instead, which is, of course, not <laughs> a good replacement. And then Close Quarters Combat. Still debating, um, might be better to uh, do Precision and get like the Sky Hunter. Um, that would actually also solve our energy problem, but I just like to use wind force and we will get over that when we go to the equipment in a second but uh close quarters combat 
is kind of nice because we are using marksman and cutthroat skills. Cutthroat, for example, dash or shadow step, which then triggers the cutthroat part. And then we use marksman skills, of course, with barrage. And then we have both bonuses applied. We get uh, more damage uh, equal to 10% of our damage versus card control, which right now is 28x, which is not that much, but it's still not too bad. So precision is also a good um, choice. But right now I'm using Wind Force. Uh, I really like it because of the uh, plus to barrage, because of the uh, hits have the chance to deal double damage. I would love to have a 50% here, but I got one with GA on barrage, which is uh, pretty good. And then knocks down enemies, right? Also chance to proc uh, double barrage pro projectiles and movement speed. And then it comes with inherent 130% damage to crowd control enemies. So this alone gives us a 13x multiplier with close quarters combat. And of course, as I mentioned, there's also a possibility, and it's the same build, just with using Sky Hunter, which is also great and probably potentially does more damage and solves your energy problem. So right now that I'm talking about, it, I'm like, oh no, I should use Sky Hunter, but for now, let's use Wind Force, but you can go either way. And I think Eaglehorn, uh, sorry, <laughs> Eaglehorn, not Eaglehorn, Sky Hunter would be ahead in terms of damage and using precision. In any case, the rest of our gear is Call of the Nameless, which seems like the insane choice for every rogue because of trick attacks and unstable elixirs. Then we have Scoundrel's Letters, which gives us a huge, almost 50% uh, inner sight duration. And then also when I'm casting Course Goods, which is a lot, while Inner Sight is up, then I have a chance to spawn Cult Traps, Poison Trap, or Death Trap, which is pretty cool, pretty cool effects. And it's also the reason why we use Cult Traps and have Cult Traps with the Chill effect instead of maybe using Smoke Grenade, which is also a viable option. The rest of the stats is it's okay, like Max Life, and then you get Movement Speed, and then you get Damage Reduction when it's affected by Trap Skills. It's, it's okay. That's kind of neat, I like it. And Fist of Fate also seems to be the go-to choice for almost all rogues. This can have huge variants. This one has a max roll on attack speed, a low roll on crit strike, a mid roll lucky hit chance, a low roll on this lucky hit um, applies a random crock knoll effect, and then a good roll on the randomness of attack damage. So it's it's cool, it's neat. Um, you could also use something that has plus two barrage and then use uh, like the... Um, acceleration aspect that gives you more core skill attack speed and then what we use is the umbrus aspect of course to get our dark shrouds going and i'm using Raconaut's wake um i like the affixes a lot it got movement speed it got non-fist damage it got all rest a huge all rest bonus which solves all resistances and then cooldown reduction what i don't like so much is the legendary aspect because the damage is pretty pretty low but um, currently I'm using it mainly because of the resistance to all elements. Um, so yeah, and the cooldown reduction is, is very neat because I think you don't find cooldown reduction on boots, but I could be mistaken after all these reworks. I already mentioned uh, Wind Force. Right now I, I slotted Vulnerable Damage. I should probably slot in uh, Critical strike, strike Damage. I think that would be uh, better. In fact, let's see if we have these... Where are all my emeralds? There's one emerald. Oh, never mind then, I'm doing this later and I'm probably gonna try this with Sky Hunter and go nuts. Um, I'm using branching volleys to enhance my barrage and then here on your sword for example you can have damage to crowd control enemies which again gives us more uh, overall damage from the close quarters combat. Ideally you want dex, max life and damage, something like this or uh, equal to that, and then I'm using a Surrev, which gives us another chance to deal cold damage and to freeze, which is kind of nice. So, again, our Frigid Finesse will give us more damage against freezing enemies and <coughs> also gives us cold damage inherently. Also, it's attack speed, so all nice stats. Um, moving up to the rings, this is the high velocity, also enhances barrage, and then here you can temper cold imbuement casts. So here I have cold imbue last for two more casts. Here I have one more cast, it's a low roll, unfortunately. Here I have 
three more cards because I master worked it already seven times, so it even goes up more. I should re-roll this to hopefully get two more cards on my temper. And then we're good to go. Right now we have eight uh eight cards of column human and we want more of course. Other than that, attack speed, max life dexterity is nice, and then either damage to crowd control temper or inner sight duration. I'm not really sure which one. It's probably damage to crowd control is better because it always gives you a flat damage increase and inner sight. Yeah, it gives us critical strike chance and then through the legendary paragon node some core damage. We'll see in a second. Um, as for the amulets, you want frigid finesse if you're going the cold variant, and then they were have you like cooling reduction would be nice. I chose dexterity for now because uh, it's very expensive to reroll into cold cooling reduction. I got marksman damage, not ideal. I have one temple left, and I'm afraid to use it um, because I don't want to get something that I cannot use at all. But ideally, again, you would uh, have want to have crowd control damage or in a side duration. Right, that's it for the gear. Moving on to the Paragon board, trying to speed it up a bit. Uh, by the way, you can also find the build in the description below if you want to check it out yourselves. We're moving on here, we have the canny because we're doing non-physical damage and then it increases our non-physical damage or the increases non-physical damage an enemy takes from me. So I guess it's a debuff for the enemy, which is good against bosses mostly. Then we got the combat live right here very important to get um, energy back together with the exploit weakness legendary node right here moving on to the tricks of the trade and this one uh, also is nice because you can just cast your dash and you get 25 percent more damage with your marksman skills and dash is up every six seconds this is for eight seconds so it turns out to yeah be permanent if you just use your dash or your shadow step actually or your invigorating strike if you dare do so. Uh, control seems uh, obvious. More damage to chilled enemies, more damage to frozen or stunned. Then we get over here to get the fluidity. <clears throat> it's actually, I don't know, this board is, this gives us only 10 extra strength. Um, probably should go here just to get more uh, bonus from the, from the glyph itself. But other than that, it gives us um, 10x damage and more energy regener regeneration after we cast an agility skill. Again, we're casting dash, we're casting shadow step, we're even casting, um, sometimes we're casting cult drops, so this will be up. It's only 6 seconds, I hope they, I, I would hope they, they enhance that and make it like 8 or 10 seconds, but there we go. This is the cheap shot board, which gives us more damage for each nearby enemy that is crowd controlled. And a uh, staggered boss provides a maximum bonus, so pretty self-explanatory. When we go up here, we got Eldritch, Bounty, and a little bit of Imbued and non-physical damage. This is neat. It's kind of okay. It depends like how many charges you have with the cold damage. It also affects, for example, our Azurev procs. Um, because if you do cold damage, then we have 20x on it, so... It's kind of cool because you can really, really feel that if you use your Column Human, you do way more damage. You could also go with another board here, which is the one that enhances your damage against against enemies that ha are under the effect of traps, because we are laying a lot of traps automatically when we have inner side up. So that's also an, an option. It's probably in the build uh, in the description below. So and then to the variants. This is all like pretty usual stuff. Uh, again, up here you get to the trap board instead of the Eldritch Bounty, and then they go, go here to the Eldritch Bounty board. But then, <clears throat> then they usually use like I think it's cunning, cunning stratagem here for other builds, but we use inner side. So we go to Lay Runner's Instinct right here, and you read when inner side's gauge 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 becomes full, you gain 100% dodge chance for two seconds. I don't know why it's only two seconds. It should be for the full duration, which would be cool. Your core skills deal increased damage equal to 25% of your core skill damage bonus while inner side gauge remains full up to 35x. And this is the greatest scam. <laughs> Maybe it's not a scam. It's the greatest lie of all time. <clears throat> because you cannot reach 35x in the current state of the game. There's no gear pieces that give you 
critic, uh, sorry, core skill damage bonus. They removed all of it. It's not on tempering. It's not on anything uh, unique. So you cannot reach that at all. And now you're wondering, oh, why you have 24.5 then? That's what leads us to our last board right here. It's the Cunning Strategian board. The Cunning Strategian board has plus core damage nodes. So that's where we got it. So I specifically go here, get the 28% here, get the 7 here, the 7 here, the 7 here. Then I get the 28 here, the 7 here, the 7 here, the 7 here. And it's done. That's all the core skill damage that you can muster in this game, which leads up to 24.5, which is still pretty decent. We are missing out 10.5, but I think it's okay since we have other multipliers that we can use, like damage to cross control bonus. And then lastly, I got the exploit uh, glyph right here, and yeah, that's about it. <clears throat> But yeah, I would wish they give us some chance to get core skill damage bonus on our gear because I believe um, <laughs> this is an, an, an huge oversight from Blizzard. And I don't think it's in the temper of Rogue. Like there's like this alchemist control temper for Rogue. But it's a different one. It only gives you like shadow crash, chilling weight and whatever. So yeah, this is the build and we already talked for like ooh, 16 minutes. Use the timestamps below if you want to go into the actual action, which is uh, we go now. We have a TS-96 Nightmare Dungeon right here. So it's our purpose. <clears throat> and let's see. So um, the one downside right now is that against bosses, um, inner sight works in a way that it pops up at a random enemy, and when you are just when there's just a boss, and of course it pops up at a boss, and you can shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, and then you get your inner sight buff if this little icon here is full. And I haven't seen it in the patch notes, but what what they did patch a couple patches ago is. This also fills up when you're not shooting at people with inner sight debuff with this eye over them. But it doesn't seem to happen anymore, so that's one thing. The other thing is, after your inner sight is full and you have unlimited energy, when this energy is gone after like 7 point whatever seconds, it takes some time until a new eye pops up over an enemy, which is especially irritating against the boss, because, I mean, there's just one enemy and this little eye is just not showing up. That's a bit of a downside with this build and a bit annoying. I hope they look at it, but as I can see from the Lay Runner's Instinct Paragon note, they don't seem to care about inner side builds. Maybe in Season 6, aka the expansion. So, other than that, this is um, it's pretty chill. You basically just use your agility skills and you just shoot everything and then if you want to use your cold imbument but you do want to use your agility skills and because you need to use um <clears throat> deal damage a cutthroat damage to a close enemy for the close quarters combat uh, key passive and then also the other glyphs that i showed you and legendary node that activates after you use a agility skill but it should be up fairly often. If I wouldn't use Rakanov's Wake Boots, I would actually use the aspect that gives you another charge of Shadow Step, where I think Shadow Step is the boat. And it gives you 20% damage reduction for 3 seconds. So if you have that legendary aspect on your boots, you can use it twice and it even resets after you kill someone with Shadow Step, which sometimes happens. Especially with controller, it's just a bit random when you use Shadow Step sometimes. Special room key. That's a fairly quick uh, dungeon, I guess. I need time to do <clears> that. So now we can see the boss, which is not really pleasurable uh, sometimes because of the inner side interaction, but it's still uh, okay. And 
I mostly use, and I haven't done it yet, I mostly use the resource reduction, reduction one. And again, <clears throat> probably with a Sky Hunter and uh, Precision, uh, so this would be easier. But you can see we are pretty good at staggering as well. And there we go. Actually, uh, a good kill. And yeah, I'm in the process of leveling up the poison damage glyphs so that I can try the poison variant. But yeah, that's it. Sorry, I just sneeze here. Um, that's it for the build. I hope you like it. I hope you like something a bit different, but still, still very, very playable and viable. Yeah, of course, I cannot use it for tier 8 Infernal Hordes, but that's also due in part because I don't have the gear yet. I believe this still has a not reached its ceiling. Starless Skies will elevate this, uh, a better fist of fate and other pieces of gear that I can still find. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck, have fun. Goodbye.